Okay, I know I bang on about this, but it has to be one of the most common questions that I get asked because when you buy a bike, they normally come with cheap shitty wheels and they often wear out, the free hubs go and all of a sudden you're looking at a 50, 80 quid free hub upgrade, the nipples start to corrode, whatever it may be. And you're just looking for something that's just a bit more reliable without spending loads and loads of money. So today I'm gonna to try and answer that question. What wheels are out there for about 500 quid that are a good, durable and reliable upgrade to what comes stock on your bike. It's actually a really tough category to answer. You see, once you cross the thousand pound barrier or something, and you're looking at carbon wheels, there's actually a whole lot of choice from a whole variety of brands, including all the Chinese ones, if you want to. But the 500 pound category is actually still quite challenging. Probably before COVID, back in the sort of the 2020s, our absolute go-to choice was the Percenti Forza, an absolutely fantastic rim, really, really durable, really reliable, and we would build it into pretty much whatever we wanted. We even had the option of doing bike text hubs. Since then, the trend has been for going wider and wider, especially in gravel, and they've got the PI25, I think it is. But the prices of those Percenti wheels have now got a bit crazy, and they're now competing with really well-known brands like DT Swiss and Mavic and everything else, and other brands like Scribe and Hunt have come along. As much as I still really like the Percenti Forzas and the Percenti I25s, at that price, I really struggle to recommend them. So I started having a hunt around the Mavic, for instance. Mavic are one of those wheel brands that you'd like to say, do you know what, I can recommend a set of Mavic. I don't think you can anymore because there's so many proprietary bits and pieces. At that 500 pound price point, you want to be able to walk into any bike shop. I need a spoke, I need a bearing, I need a free hub, whatever it is, and it'd be simple because they should be reliable uh, wheels at that sort of price. So here's an example from our favorite brand, hunt this time with a couple of broken spokes now not normally a massive problem we can just buy a spoke and put a new spoke in tension this up no problem whatsoever but because hunt use pillar spokes these are really hard to get hold of here in the uk now if we had to at a push we would be able to find a spoke that fits but we'd never get the spoke tension right because it'd be a different sort of tension characteristic if you like so the only way to repair this properly is to actually go about trying to hunt down a pillar wing spoke which is not easy you'll be screaming down the camera at me what about the hunt four season gravel wheel set Yep, you're absolutely right. Probably one of the best selling wheels in this category of solid, reliable, use it on road, use it on gravel wheel sets. And yeah, a lot of you have probably reported some really good results of those Hunt 4 seasons. We have definitely seen problems with them. People tend to bring us problems. We've seen nipples corrode like we've shown you on the channel before. We have had problems trying to identify axles and free hubs and bits and pieces like that. But all credit to Hunt, they have got significantly better over the last few years. It used to be that a customer would bring a Hunt wheel into us and be like, oh no, I've got to try and identify what model year it was and what code number it is and then try and get on the phone call and have a really frustrating conversation with Hunt. And when the wheels are in sale, they've got to be worth a look. I don't think I would go there as the epitome of durability at that price point, but saving a couple hundred quid is definitely compelling. Now this is an interesting one. This is actually a brand new wheel, reminiscent of what you're probably going to get if you buy something from China. Now this is, it says Microtech. I think it is an OEM wheel that came with Basso bikes. Again, this is the sort of thing that if you brought this into a bike shop, a lot of the time we'll be really scratching our heads as to where you get, because you can't just Google Microtech and try and find these parts. You know, here is the free hub body. Now this uses one with a very small steel wire spring and that steel wire spring often corrode and stops these little springs, these little pulls from springing up and engaging. And in here you can see they've used an axle which isn't anodized at all. So this will rust very quickly and then a steel washer. So now you've got a steel washer, a hard steel thing against an aluminium axle. And I promise you, once this bearing starts to wear down a little bit, this steel thing will rub into this axle super fast and there won't be much left of it. Um, very, very quickly. And unfortunately, this is one of those things where we would be, I, I don't know how to help. Um, I don't know where to get another one of those to get this person up and riding again. So luckily, this set of wheels actually came from someone who just wanted them upgraded from scratch and we'll probably just give these away or something because once these are worn out, pretty much landfill. I wanna to talk to you about what I think is a benchmark. So if you're gonna be shout shopping and we know there's loads of discounts, I'm gonna offer these DT Swiss wheels as a benchmark and you can decide for yourself if you're willing to pay the price of these DT Swiss wheels or what you're willing to compromise for 
a cheaper price. We're going to start with the new GR1600s. Now, we saw these at a trade show, and I thought, oh, well, that's quite interesting. You've tidied up all the logos. You made a couple of little subtle changes. So tell you what, we'll send you a pair. Review them on the channel. Let me know what you think. This is the front wheel. There's not an awful lot to say. And that's the whole point of this category. It should just be like, hmm. Can't go wrong. DT Swiss 350 hub, DT Swiss aero comp spokes, and the GR1600 rim. So this is a gravel wheel set. They've obviously got road and mountain bike versions of this similar sort of thing, but the gravel one's probably where people ask me for aluminium wheels most often. So let's go with this. 24 millimeters internal, up-to-date, modern, wide, and it's got a hook in there as well. It's got a deep drop channel. It's gonna make it dead easy for getting tires on and off as well. And the rim tape in there all looks nicely finished as well. You get a tubeless valve, and it's actually a really nice quality tubeless valve. The nipples on this are aluminium, but I don't have a problem with aluminium against aluminium. It's only a problem when you put um, aluminium next to carbon. So another example for you, this is a Windspace Hyper, another wheel that's often talked about on here on YouTube. We have loads of problems when people just bring these into us for service and they are actually quite fragile. In here, there is a steel washer. So if this bearing here starts to fail, that steel washer will eat into that aluminium axle or make a right mess of it. The thing we have the biggest problem with, with Windspace free hubs, is one, this tiny little sliver of plastic. <laughs> have to be really careful removing these because these can actually crack and snap and literally it will not work uh, without that in there. And then all of these pulls and pull springs are super fragile. So to remove in one of those, and the problems we have is people try and service these themselves at home will either lose a pull spring or in trying to remove them a bit more aggressively, you can sort of bend them back and then they sort of bend and snap quite easily. So these, um, these little things must cost like, absolute pennies, but without them, your free hub literally will not work. And I'll tell you what, if you go onto the Wound Space website and try and find me the right size plastic washer or the right size axle, I bet you can't. The Aero Comp spokes, now, you really don't need an aerodynamic spoke on a wheel like this, but what the aerodynamics does do is because they have to flatten out the steel by going through a tempering process, it normally makes it significantly stronger, which is why things like the pillar spokes and the sapping CX rays, CX sprints have such legendary strength because of the tempering more so than the aerodynamics. So it's okay, I'm happy with the spoke choice, that's all good. And the legendary DT Swiss 350, I think every single bike shop the world over will know where to get parts um, and how to service these. They are so easy. Here's another wheel that often gets talked about on YouTube. This is a nine velo. Now, beautifully light and very stiff. And I'm pretty sure if you attach these to your bike, there'd be a fantastic riding experience until they started to break down and have problems. You see, this is a carbon rim, an aluminum nipple, a carbon spoke, and then an, an aluminum nipple on this end as well. So essentially what you've got in terms of nobility of materials is one big battery, and this will just suffer from galvanic corrosion super quickly. These aluminum parts will just turn into white powder and you'll have a right mess on your hands. The other thing I don't like about these is this brake surface or this surface here, because you put a center lock rotor on top and rather than having a completely flat machine surface, you've just got one, two, three, four, five, six, like little ridges. And we've had problems with this in the past where they've not been completely square. We've had to sort of shim them out to get the center lock rotor to sit perfectly flush. Anyway, the reason they make these so lightweight is because they drill into all of these and it won't take long before a cassette will eat into this pretty quickly. But again, these end caps really aren't held on with much. Look how simple that came away. Um, but as long as you can ride it in nice dry conditions and maintain it, these are definitely gonna be lightweight and reasonably well priced for the performance. What I also like, um, which is why this should be a benchmark, is that these things like end caps, I can just get spares. Um, and if I need to replace them or make it into a quick release axle for whatever reason, then we can do that as well. When I talk about spares, this is something that's really overlooked. You guys in the comments will often say, yeah, but you can get spares on fast sports. And do you know what? You can't. You can often get a, a free hub, but you really can't get the full range of spares. And this is what I mean. Here's a really good example of what your classic aluminium workhorse wheel might look like. This is used all the way through the winter. It's absolutely filthy, but it comes into us with a a few squeaks and a few rattles and this is a fulcrum so we can know that we can go onto the fulcrum website look up this wheel set find the spare parts because this one is probably going to need a new axle relatively soon 
you see all this pitting here where this bearing has been running. This is just corrosion. And when we try and put a new bearing on this, it will just never fit properly. It'll always have that little bit of wobble. And as a result, that little bit of wobble will just become a creak, which you'll probably mistake for being your bottom bracket or something. Quite a lot of the time, that creak is actually just something in your rear hub that's creaking along. So this sort of situation, fantastic. We can get a spare, brilliant. Here's an example from something a little bit more exotic. This is a Zip 303S and I've just removed the free hub here. Now, this is a relatively new wheel set, but you can still start to see the signs of under rotation here on the axle. Now, once this sets in and you start wearing away the anodizing, it doesn't take long before weather will get in there and accelerate that corrosion. And then you have all sorts of problems. And these are actually renowned for creaking and you've got to be really precise with the bearings that you install, etc. Not every single bearing of a 6903 or whatever it is will fit absolutely perfect. Sometimes you've got to try a couple of different ones or even use the actual zip proprietary ones. They tend to sort of fit the best. But again, these end cups are now starting to come off really easily and they've just been used a few times. The other thing with these is these little pool springs here are so famous for rusting and even dropping these, the amount of times at home mechanics have like tried to maintain these at home and you should do, but then have just dropped one and then come into a bike shop going, I just need a pool spring. That's, you know, that can be the only thing that stops your hub working. And if you've got to buy an entire unit like this from China and take weeks for it to arrive, it's just a disappointing experience. And these little springs here, just tiny little slithers of steel and you can see the corrosion setting in here. Once that corrosion is a little bit further down, these snap, these springs stop operating. You can see this one's now getting quite lazy look. And once that starts to happen, your free hub will disengage and you've got a bad experience again. Unless you're the sort of person that really does meticulously look after their free hubs, I would probably stick to brands where you know you can get these sort of spares quickly and easily. So this is the free hub body. This is the part that you can normally buy on all your Chinese wheel sets. You will see under the accessory section, you will see them list this and it'll probably be, there's really no need to necessarily sell these unless they get corroded because you can, if you've got the right tools, take the bearings out of these and replace the bearings. Inside here are some essential spares. There is a spacer in between those two bearings and on some D's T Swiss, you'll find a little sir clip as well. And they can rust and perish on all brands, some sort of spring mechanism, which you'll get whether you've got a ratchet system like this or not. Now, this is the DT Swiss ratchet. And again, you will struggle to find these from any other brand apart from DT Swiss. And they're not a stand apart. You can't just buy a DT Swiss one and put it into a scribe or uh, fast boards. These are normally proprietary to that spoke. And what happens with these is these little teeth here wear down. Essentially, they'll get pitted, they'll get a little bit of rust on them, and then they'll start to stick. And then your free hub will get sticky. Um, and there's no amount of sanding or filing that we can do. You just need to replace them. And you know, so often, the fact that one of these is worn down or corroded is the reason why we throw a wheel in the bin and just have to give up. So we also have the non-drive side end cap, which is completely different to the drive side. And again, dependent on every hub because you want these to be adaptable. You want to be able to adjust them. Maybe you make it into a 148 axle or a quick release axle, whatever it might be. Even if you've got an old specializer, 135 by 10, you can still do that with DT Swiss hubs. This is probably the next spare that often um, it has a problem because if you can see there's a bearing in here and this bearing here is the one that carries most of the load and it's the one that if you ignore it will start to rattle around and it's things like this spacer is the bit that's going to get destroyed and if it does you're going to need to replace it and you can't buy that spacer on the fast sports website and probably you just can't bearings again i see people down in the comments of my video saying yeah but you can buy bearings on the website I don't care about bearings. Bearings are all standard sizes. These are ISO sizes. You can get these from wherever. Just type in the code number onto a website, get the bearings. You can choose them in whatever spec level or whatever types of seals that you want. These DT Swiss ones have a low contact seal on the inside and a double lip seal on the outside. So you get the better weather seal on this side and less friction on this side. But you can buy complete weather sealed. You're not tied to the bearings from the manufacturer at all. That's probably the one piece that you really don't need to list on all these Chinese uh, websites because you can get these anywhere. These, however, this is a part that is so essential and wears down so frequently that all these Chinese websites really need to start putting on the websites because, again, if some of these bearings start to wobble, this whole axle will start to under rotate. You'll get wear marks, just like we've shown you on the videos of bottom brackets before. You'll start to see it eat into these. These also pit and corrode, and as they do, you'll get play on the bearing 
and then you have a really substandard riding experience so these axles can also break especially if you're riding on gravel and mountain bike i don't think there's a hope hub user out there that's not broken uh, one of these and had to buy an entirely new axle and it should be such a simple part the one criticism with dt swiss because you can get all of these parts like worldwide is this bearing here is actually underneath this ratchet now for bike shops, this is a really easy thing to do. We have a special tool in this. We just use a big thousand newton meter impact gun. It will come out in three seconds. You'll often see people on YouTube struggling with like a massive breaker bar. There's no need for that. Get the right tool, 24 millimeter socket, impact gun, it's out in three seconds. But to be honest, they've got another uh, washer in there, which actually stops any dirt ingress. So it's very rare that you would actually need to do this and replace that bearing. Okay, let's get this back together and talk about the wheel set as a whole. So that's that. I think that's pretty simple. And I think this has to be the minimum standard we reach in order to have any kind of a recommendation um, on a YouTube channel or a review or anything. You just literally need to be able to service and repair your wheels without having to send lots of emails backwards and forwards, trying to identify parts. You should just be able to go onto a website, identify the parts, put that into Google, buy a part. If you can't do that, then I just don't think it's a wheel even worthy of your consideration no matter what the price, because all of those parts in there are all lightweight aluminium parts, no matter what brand you buy it from, and they are gonna corrode and they are going to wear out because you can't have lightweight and durable. You have to have some sort of serviceability built into it. So for 500 quid, I would say that these are probably the most repairable and most serviceable wheels for that money. Are they the best performance? Are they the lightest weight? Probably not, but what's most important to you? So as it happens, we are actually gonna take these out for a ride and give you a proper performance review as well. So there you go, I present to you the idea that the DT Swiss GR1600 and the road and the mountain bike equivalent budget aluminum wheels for about 500 quid as the benchmark. And hopefully this video has given you the knowledge you need that if you are going to find something a little bit cheaper, you know what to look for, you know what you're getting yourself into, or if you're going to go something for higher performance and spend a bit more money, those points to look out for. In my mind, in terms of durability, serviceability, and availability of spare parts for the foreseeable future, this has to be a benchmark. Okay, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, add all your comments down below. I really, really appreciate it. So does everyone else reading. If you've got things to add, get down there in the comments, share your knowledge. I look forward to reading them. Okay, see you in the next one.